So March 2016, you drop A Good Night in the Ghetto. Mm-hmm. Those were all your friends on the cover. Mm-hmm. That's actually him going like this. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, man. Why that name? Because we needed it at that time. That's what I felt like we needed. I'm like, we need a good night in the ghetto. We're going through all this shit. We just need one fun night. That's why you look at it. It's the chips and the Hennessy. Because it's like, what does that <laughs> signify? A fucking party, a great time. You know? yeah. That's what we needed. Uh, Fuck It Up is on that album. Mm-hmm. Uh, featuring YG. Mm-hmm. I just looked it up. It's got 60 million views on YouTube. Yeah. Plus another 20. No, I'm sorry, 60 million views on Spotify. Yeah. Another 20 million on YouTube. Mm-hmm. And Apple Music, they don't release their numbers, but I'm sure you 30. probably 30. Mm-hmm. 100. It's basically gold. Uh, it just ain't certified yet. Uh, over 100 million people listen to that song. Mm-hmm. How did it feel to have that under your belt? Because how does it feel it did well, but not like this it up? Just, just happened? Like, oh, really? Yeah. It's just TikTok. Time. It was already big, but TikTok just like. Oh, TikTok made that song go over the top. A little bit, yep. It okay. was already like stupid big, but then TikTok like helped it a little bit, yeah. So at what point did YG come around? Was it around it was like A Good Night in the Ghetto or before? Right I, before it. Right before, before it, yeah. So how did you guys initially uh Sycamore. Oh, okay, that's a yeah, good one. Sick. Me sick sickle. found me. Nobody know that though. Sick came all the way to Oakland. All right, shout out to Sycamore. Yeah, me and him go back to like 2002. Yeah, nah, we were sick. both mixtape DJs, like grinding out. It's good to see him uh, do well. Yeah, now nah, Sick found me for sure. He okay, came he all the way. YG also. So okay, he I, was I, doing his album in the Bay, and yeah. when he was doing his album, how does it feel? It was booming. And it just kept going around. So everybody's like, "Well, who the fuck is she?" Okay. And then Sycamore ended up finding me, and then YG found out they were shopping me around. And he like. Why y'all taking everywhere and not bringing her to me? And my ass always wanted to be on death row. Eventually, it was just like, all right, get off with it. That's how that happened. So you signed a 400 initially? 400 Interscope, yeah. And then Interscope? No, Interscope 400. Oh, Interscope 400. Yeah. Okay, so Interscope first and then? Interscope is, like, 400 is under the umbrella. Interscope. Yeah, oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Uh, how did it feel to sign that deal? You had been grinding for, what, 10 years at that point? More? I didn't really get it. Like, I don't know. Cause you know what people don't realize about me? Like I come from the Bay, right? So it's like E42 short. They laid the foundation of independency. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Through the independent hustle. I always wanted to be independent. They paved the way for what Master P became great at. You feel me? So that was always my goal. At the moment at the time, my manager was just like, this would make it easier on us if you just do this. Which is now, as you see, I should never do it. <laughs> it was like, you know, it halted a lot of shit. But in my heart, I never really kind of wanted to do the whole deal thing. But hmm. I was like, shit, if I'm going to do it, I always want to be on death row. Fuck it, let me see what it do. And I lived on the edge for some years. Well, right around that time, uh, Why You Always Hating? No, Why You Always Hating came because of what Sycamore and I already did. So what happened was Sycamore and my business partner manager now, right, they flew me out. They're like, let me see what you can do. And I was telling them, like, I could do 10 songs in one night. They're like, yeah, whatever. We're just going to fly you. I'm like, no, I'm going to do 10 songs in one night. The last song happened to be Why You Always Hating. That's why I sound like that. I don't even like the song. It was just me. <laughs> Blaze, you feel me? YG wanted that. He wanted it hella bad. And that's how that happened. Because he, when they first took me over there to him, because he was like right around the corner from where I was recording, they just played him all the records. He was like, man, this shit bang, this shit bang. Like, let me get it. And I was like, I don't really feel that. And he just kept pushing. So what happened was a swap. I took it up. He took Why You Always Hating. And that's oh. how that happened. Because we ended up like building a relationship. And over the course of time, I was like, all right, if you want that record so bad, you take this one, I take that one. That's how it happened. Okay. So YG takes that record. You're already on the hook. Mm-hmm. I had a, a verse in the hook already. Okay. Yeah. But he took just the hook. Yeah. He did his own verse. Yeah. Then he had a Drake uh-huh. <laughs> of all people mm-hmm. who even at that time was the biggest thing mm-hmm. in music. Mm-hmm. How did you find out about that record and what was your reaction? That was because of me anyways. Nobody know that. Like Drake was already tapped in. Really? Yeah. So I you... was already talking to Drake before that even happened. Really? Yeah. Why well, you just hit him like, I'm about to sign her. He was like, I f*** with her. I'm going to do it. Because he was already, me and him was already tapped in on our own accord. Aha. Yeah. Were you guys doing music at all or just talking? Me and Drake? Yeah. No, Drake just reached out on some players and he was just chopping it up on some players. He's like a real music dude. Yeah. Like Drake really, it doesn't matter your stature. If he really, you know, a lot of people I know that, that have had conversations mm-hmm. with him who do music are like, yeah, he just loves the music. No, he's a player for sure. Okay. 
So then, Why You Always Hating comes out. Mm -hmm. There's a video for it. Mm -hmm. And was that the biggest look at that point in your life? Essentially, yeah. It should have been. Really, if you really think about it, yeah. you're doing the hook of a yeah. Drake song. With you know what's crazy? That moment wasn't the, big, the biggest moment for me. My favorite moment at that time was the Fader for it. I don't know why. It just. That, the was, that was a standout. The show? Yeah, it was a standout for me because it's like, we made it. It's like me and all the homies. At some big ass event, just doing us going up. Right, because your first show in the Bay was sold out. That was way later, like June. Oh, that was later. Yeah, well, Fatal Four was the first, my first ever anything. You never performed before? Like in Oakland on some hole in the wall, but like as far as like some real serious shit, it was Fatal Four. And it came hella quick. Like I tried to tie this field like November. Fatal Four was March. So you're on a roller coaster at this point. Yeah, I'm going to f*** up. <laughs> it's cracking. <laughs> like you basically were just, you know, down here grinding, 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 yeah. grinding, and then boom. Yeah. Out of nowhere. It wasn't a boom, though. You just said it. Like, you know, I've been doing this since nine. Well, so. yeah, but that's what I'm saying. But it's not like it was a slow progression. No. It was like grinding and then yeah. suddenly yeah. everything blows up. Yeah. Uh, and then one of your songs got used in Insecure. Like four of them up. Really? Oh God! Four songs today. Yep, like four. That's what's up. I fuck with Issa. That's yeah. Oh yeah. Issa, like she genuine as fuck. like she been a fan since day one and always been real. I did a block party with her and HBO, which led to me getting music on Ballers. Like it's it's been a good relationship. With them. Yeah, I mean, Insecure features a lot of female rappers that like mm -hmm. no one was really familiar with. I think, mm -hmm. especially male fans, because men don't really listen to female rap well, that much. Me. But yeah, like once once you hear it, once you see it in the setting, because I think Insecure is one of those shows that males and females watch, watch together. Yeah, on me together. Yeah, yeah. So you had four songs on. Mm -hmm. Dope, dope. 